Hello, people. I'm Sunny Strait. I'm the voice of Krillin and Bardock in the Dragon Ball series. And, uh, you know, something I like about Krillin. <laughs> <laughs> what do you I, like? told, I told you say I wasn't it. gonna say anything funny. I was just gonna hand it off to you and make you say something funny. I'll just wait for it. Okay. Um, Here it comes. Krillin is a is a is a the very definition of courage. He's the guy that marches in when he knows he's gonna die, when he knows that he's going to die, and does it anyway to save his friends. It is funny. <laughs> <laughs> Dead crim. Uh, I'm Mike McFarland. Uh, in the Dragon Ball universe, I play Master Roshi. I'm also Yajirobe. I'm Android 8. I'm uh, up to you with a thing. I'm Pui Pui. I'm <gasps> baby from GT. You're, You're Pui Pui wow. from GT? No, no, no. I'm baby from GT. I didn't know we're going to list our entire Pui Pui resume. Okay. Well, well, I'm just listing no, off let some me go things. back. I'm going to go back. Okay, mine again. <laughs> no, <laughs> there we go. Now we're back. How'd you do that? Uh, oh, that's magic. <laughs> Oh, I'm Chuck. I, I play Android 17 and Emperor Pilaf. I'm also Master Shen, Mr. Shu, Android 13, Kibito. But mostly. Mostly uh, Android 17. Yes, yeah, there we go. Oh, whatever. And I'm mostly <laughs> Roshi. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like about your character? Oh, I love that Android 17 has returned. Like, because he was gone. I, for years, joked that he was going to come back as, a, like, a hippie, tree-loving hippie, and then he did, basically. Um, for Roshi, I like that, although he's usually taken his comic relief, there are some moments where it's like, you know, let me bestow wisdom upon you with a long story. I think that's kind of a neat thing where it's not just like, oh, here comes the funny, over and over again. Oh, I'm glad that we have got more universes. I thought the other one was getting too small. So you like the fact that there's yeah. there's more universes in this current Once you can instant transmission across the universe, it becomes a very small universe. So you got to start introducing more universes. Across more challenges. the universe, singing. You know, as, as with all sci-fi, when you open up where the limitations of what you are used to in your own universe and like, you know, gravity only works like this and all these other forces of nature only work like this, even though we have these uh, aliens existing in here and their, you know, their power is set like this by opening up to with other universes, none of that matters anymore and, and anybody can do anything or you can bring in something like, that shouldn't be possible, but it is because it's from another universe. Well, so it opens up the storytelling quite a bit. Well, plus Goku is like all about just going up and up in power levels and once you've achieved and beaten everyone in this universe, where do you go? You gotta have yeah, more universes. Universe. Yeah. More universes to a con, yeah. So we've got, finally, Tournament of Power. Mm -hmm. Everyone's been talking about the Tournament of Power for a long mm -hmm. time. Yeah. What are some cool aspects about the Tournament of Power that you have noticed so far? Something your characters have gone through? Um, my, something about the tournament itself? My, my favorite cool. thing, I had, uh, uh, I'd never acted with Goku. Mm -hmm. and none of my what? characters were ever with Goku. And then suddenly, he comes to, to recruit Android 17. And Goku's a, a goofball, man. I never yeah. realized, until I was acting opposite him, I never realized what a goofball he was. And Android 17 and he, like, against each other, it's like the perfect comic foil. Nice. Yeah. They should be a, a buddy cop movie. With oh, that'd be great. It'd be great. Mm -hmm. Well, I like the fact that Krillin had just become a cop. And he was getting his muscle tongue was getting really thin and everything. He was just like, you know, I'm just doing my job, you know. And then all of a sudden he's recruited to go back, and so he's got to work out. His muscles get bigger, and uh, then they go on a, a hunt for you to get some herbs or something. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. And it's really trippy. Uh, <laughs> trippy herbs. But I, I like the fact that his his family, his wife and daughter, are the ones that guilt him into doing it. Because he was just like, no, go away. I've got a job. I, I don't need this. And they're like, we want a tough daddy. Okay. <laughs> we want a tough daddy. That's exactly the line. Oh, Paraphrasing, wow. but yeah. Come on, strong daddy, strong daddy. <laughs> um, for Roshi, I like that they have sort of, because I think it slipped away through a bunch of uh, Z and GT and such. They have reintroduced buff Roshi. Yeah. Oh, buff yeah. power of Roshi, yeah, yeah. like Hulk size Roshi. Mm -hmm. Along with that, through the Tournament of Power, you get to see Roshi do all sorts of things, which let you know, like remind you why he's the martial arts master that that you know taught a lot of the Dragon Ball cast. He reminds Krillin, yeah, what he's capable of too. Right, right. Krillin thinks he's like he's like, dude, you've 
fought much tougher than this. And he's like, oh yeah, thanks, Roche. <laughs> he's not master Roche. No he's the master. He's gotta be master. Right. Yeah. Because now we're in we're in the big uh, uh, universal tournaments. Right. Yeah. And <clears throat> Goku and all his wisdom. Mm. Decides to bring Frieza back to life. Good idea. <laughs> great idea, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, Goku's ideas are usually not great, but they tend to work out. I don't know. I think with Goku, though, he's like um, all of his enemies become friends eventually, or at least allies. Uh, you would hope, and you would like to think. Uh, so. I mean, it's, it's pretty. That's a pretty common mo with him, though, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Like it was Piccolo and then Vegeta. Mm -hmm. And who else became his friend? Boo uh, became friends. Androids. Androids yeah. became friends. Yep. Yeah. So maybe that's what this is setting up to. Eventually, even Frieza will come around and go, "I like that monkey." You know, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It definitely makes for a cool storytelling. Yeah. This is, um, you know, rather than expected team, expected team. What? <laughs> you know, and you throw that element into it. It makes it cool for the viewer, and it makes it cool for where the story could go. Yeah. Besides, with Beerus and Whis on this side, who cares what Frieza's doing? That's true. Yeah. 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 Freeze is, is a fun character, though. Oh, I love Freeze. That's one of my favorites. So one of the big things that happens yeah. early on. To Roshi? No. No. Like, to a universe. Oh, the, the universe. entire universe. Universe 9? Yeah. Number nine. Gone. Number nine. Number nine. Number, Number nine. nine. Number nine is gone. Is gone. And then that guy, that beverage, Mojito. Mojito. Mojito says he's laughing. It's his thing. universe, and yeah. he's laughing about it. Well, why is that? Well, that would lead me to believe that Mojito mm -hmm. is doing something nefarious. Maybe he understands. Underhanded. Maybe. Or maybe he understands that if in an infinite universe with an mm -hmm. infinite number of universes, if you destroy that one, it's going to be created somewhere else. Yeah, to him it and it's all the Matrix idea. anyway. Well, what about it is all, all the creatures yeah. within it? Well, then they just <laughs> they're reborn somewhere else. Would you like that? If it was better, yeah, if and, I made a little but, more but money. You don't, but you don't know. If I didn't have as far receding hairline, yeah, I'd come back. <sighs> We're talking about reincarnation. Is that what this show's about? It could no. be. Could be. I mean. We Maybe. have Dragon Balls. That's, that's our. We outfit. could yeah, wish yeah. the entire universe is back. That's right. That's, that's. I mean, that is one wish. I hope that doesn't happen. I should do that. I want to see some real damage. You want, you want actual destruction? I want the entire happen. universe wiped out. <laughs> you want? You want the for fan. my entertainment? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Thanos. <laughs> Not saying all of them. Just half. Just half. <laughs> So if the universe disappears, is that sad? Because everyone in the well, universe is gone. Well, it's so sad when be. 10 goes. Because Gohan finds that locket from the guy he defeats and realizes yeah. that it's just a family locket. And he's like, oh, I've killed a guy and his family and everything. But if you get rid of the whole universe, is it sad? Because nobody in the universe Only is Only if you sad identify with, with an aspect of that universe. Well, what, what I was all just... Uh, an abstract concept, who cares? What I would think is whether or not, like, oh, Aunt Bertha or someone specific, mm -hmm. yeah. if you empathize with living beings and creatures and humanity and and ge even just geography, like, like everything is gone. Like, yeah. there is nothing anymore. Even if it's not, like, from the standpoint of, like, oh, they're all going to miss each other. But I know what you're saying, because they won't, because they're right. all collectively gone. Right. Yeah. I'm just saying, as someone from the outside looking in, knowing that that could happen to you, or that you've had your own uh, experience with uh, suffering and loss, mm -hmm. maybe not on a universal scale like that. Well, yeah. I'm gonna miss but, Bertha. Like, you know, there would still be reason. empathy involved, I yeah. would think. So empathy is a good thing. <laughs> Can be. Yeah. I will try working on that. I mean, I, mean, I assume you, like empathy no, is a great No, you continue thing. being the android that you are. I will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unemotional typecasting. I have emotion. You, I've I'm never seen so any emotion from you, ever. This is the most. <laughs> ever. He's almost laughing. <laughs> Wait, this is Android 17 laughing. Excellent. That was it. Really that good. was the whole thing. That was really good. Thanks for all the, the Dragon Ball fans that have yeah. continued to be Dragon Ball, Ball fans and the new Dragon Ball fans that have come around 
as the series continues in one capacity or another through the video games or through Super or the films or whatever, the fan base just keeps growing and growing and growing. And Isn't it amazing? Cool. I mean, when we started out, I honestly thought this would last about two years. I, I didn't think that. As a two-year fad, it'll be going. And now, 20 years later, we've had careers and yeah. uh, I met uh, respectability. A, a, a grandchild, so it was grandpa, yeah. mother, and grandchild, and it had passed from grandpa to uh, grandchild. Yeah. I bestow upon you the joy of the Dragon Balls. It just comes to you. Thank you. Thank you. For thank you guys for watching. You're the best. Her job, job is so hard. hard. <laughs> Let's snuggle. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> Thanks, fans, for your dedication. Love to Dragon Ball Super. Goodbye.